billionaire investor Mark Cuban has an, uh, publicly criticized uh, Kam Kamala Harris. Rob, do you have a video on this or no? I have a separate video of okay. Mark Cuban. But see if you have a video of him criticizing the unrealized gains, proposal to tax unrealized capital gains, warning it could be a kill the stock market and negatively impact private equity and startup companies. Mark Cuban... While Cuban supports Harris, he insists she will not implement this tax plan, describing it as a starting point for broader economic discussions. Harris has proposed a 28% capital gains tax to address wealth inequality, but Cuban argues that such a move could lead to a long-term economic consequence. During a contentious CNBC interview, Cuban shared his concerns, emphasizing his frequent cons consultations with Harris's campaign. Despite his reservation, Cuban defends Harris's intent to tax the wealthy fairly, Although skepticism remains about her campaign's messaging to donor and the public. FYI, when do you think Cuban sold the Dallas Mavericks shares uh, uh, to, to get some cash out? Just recently, mm -hmm. okay? Maybe he's worried that she's going to raise capital gains. So his timing for sale is actually not bad. So, Rob, is this the clip with the two of them going back and forth? Yes. So he's on the phone, so you're not going to see Mark Cuban, but this is the phone interview with CNN. Is this where he says it. no 50 times? Go ahead. Of course, but okay. So what I told him was, if if you tax unrealized gains, you're going to kill the the stock market, right? And it's going to be the ultimate employment plan for private equity, because companies are not going to go public because you can get whipsawed, right? I mean, they realize that's the issue. Let me. I can't repeat it enough. Even though she's not directly conflicting the um, Biden tax plan, to her, her value proposition is we need to tax everybody fairly. But as you've said yourself, you can't speak for the vice president. These are things they're telling you. Who knows what they're telling right. other people? My guess is they're telling anybody who's donating to them exactly what they want to hear at this point. What no, matters no, is what no, they no, say no, publicly no, and no, what no, they no, will no, stick no, to. No, 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 15 no. no's. Absolutely, positively not. Right. I, Let me just be very I don't know. Clear like, why that. do you think that they're telling you the truth and not telling other people other things? Well, I don't, if they look, won't say it publicly, you, say it publicly. Tell all of us so that we can know, hold you to it. I get it, but you've got to get the details right. You can't just. Yeah, but we have you know, 60 days till an election. Like, wow. Good for her for pushing. Tom, what are your thoughts on this? Well, I want to know, Mark Cuban. Are you an entrepreneur and businessman or are you a proxy at this point? And, you know, I, that's a real question Ooh. that I have, <laughs> you know, because him, Tom. did it because how many times you see a senator or a congressman goes on a show and they're speaking as a proxy for Harris about economic things, you know, about taxation, about programs and stuff. And Cubans on there making what sounds like a point by an entrepreneur. And all of a sudden he's speaking almost for the campaign and using things like, well, you know, I'm having drop. It's like a name drop. I'm having conversations with them every every day. And so I'm not trying to go, you know, and pick on Mark Cuban here, but I'm just asking him a question. What position were you on on that call on that call? Because unrealized gains, first of all, I'd like the first question of the debate would be like, Kamala Harris, can you please define unrealized gains and then outline your tax program? And when she's asked to have, to have her brain form words at the same time, it keeps her heart going. She's going to be in trouble. So you've got an issue there where I think that you, you, you look at this and you say, wait a minute, you know, unrealized gain taxation, that's certainly not a good thing. But why why go on here and have Becky Quick, you know, s sitting there saying, no, hang on a second, hang on a second. And you're like arguing on behalf of the president and you're trying to make a point. I just think, Mark, you're trying to do both. And it's and it, it, it kind of exposes you a little bit. I think there's two. I guess separate arguments going on here. Correct me if I'm wrong, because I, I think I crushed it with my analogy with Vinny last week when I told him to take his shirt off and show the gains, but maybe the people didn't recognize that. But there's two conversations Sun's out, guns out. There it is. Uh, there's two conversations. There's actual long-term capital gains and what that is being taxed at. And then there's the whole conversation of the unrealized capital gains. Mm. So there, there's two different things going on. So the actual implementation of capital gains or long-term capital gains, which is basically what over a year. Is that what it is, Tommy? Correct. Is one, one year, one year is long. Cause if capital it's less gains. than a year, 364 days or less, oh, I, it's, ordinary ta income. it's taxed at ordinary income, whatever you want but capital gains, which just is 40% there, depending on if you're Tom Wells or tax bracket 39. There you go. Uh, <laughs> the, the real, the, the reality is I think it's a progressive tax, uh, progressive taxation that anything under, I believe 50,000, 90 to 50,000, depending on who you're marrying, uh, filing single or marrying jointly is actually 0% from long-term capital gains. And then below a half a million, it's 15% 
And then I believe even right now, the highest long-term capital gains rate is 20%. So this whole conversation that she wants to raise it from 20 to 28, okay, that's a conversation. But the, the second conversation to my friends out there who are like, what the hell's going on here? The current rate for unrealized capital gains is zero. And that's the number that they want to keep it at. Yeah. So you can have the conversation of what you want to tax long-term capital gain. Hey, should it be 20? Should it be 15? All right. What's the number? Let's move it. You know, the estate tax goes up and down depending on Republican presidents. That's a whole other conversation. But the unrealized capital gains tax has always been zero. And we would hope that it stays zero because it's sort of uh, ridiculous to tax something that you haven't even sold yet. Right. Yeah. We'll use a simple example, you know, and I've done this before. You have a guy that has a plumbing business, Fred and Sons. He's got five trucks. He's got about five million dollars a year at the plumbing business. And that business is worth maybe seven, eight, nine, ten million dollars. And that has grown over the year. And then somebody comes along and says, hey, Fred, yeah, your business is worth ten million dollars. Yeah. You know what? That's too much. You shouldn't have that. Well, I. I'm just building a business. I make what I make. I pay my employees and that's not what I make every year. That's just the value of my business, but mm -hmm. I have no intention of selling. I'm going to run this thing for another 10 years. That's okay. But since it's worth 10 million, we want to do a calculation and we want you to send a check to the government. Well, I, I can't do that. I don't have that kind of money. I don't have the money. I haven't the, sold the, the business, business yet. has grown. <laughs> exactly. I don't have $10 million. My business is worth that. I've got five trucks, 20 employees, and I'm just running a business. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what by they the way, mean by unrealized they gains. Say they do a 25% unrealized gains on a $10 million yes. business. You live in the state of California. That means you would have to sell 50% of your company to pay the 25%. Oh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> ridiculous. And by the way. So see, this is the funniest part about this entire exchange is the lady says, how do you know? No, 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 no. Uh, what makes you think they're telling you the truth and not the rest of us? Exactly. How do you know? How do you know? It's like, well, that's not how it works. I'm like, no, no, no. He's the, he is so, by the way, go, go to what I just sent to you, Rob, the Twitter, uh, uh, the Twitter, go to my uh, Twitter account. Just go, go to, to my Twitter, Twitter account, Rob. And if you go to, uh, go down, go down, go right there, zoom in right there. So Mark Cuban tweets this, for all Trump supporters, a question, which startups has Donald Trump invested in that didn't involve the family member? Okay. <laughs> I love this. Mine, envy has you held hostage. Either get in the ring and run for office or get to, uh, to get the same level of more authority he has or let it go. He is so ridiculously furious <laughs> and angry with the amount of attention Trump is getting that it's starting to become a little bit too... Uh, something deep down inside is bothering me. I love, but Pat, you had no idea I was even going to go here, right? But I was just wondering, what makes somebody like, because by the way, you guys are over here talking about unrealized gains. And you know what I realized? I still have no <laughs> idea what you guys are talking about. So I'm, I'm pretty sure some of the people out there are going to be talking crap like, then he's done, he's done, he's done. Okay, say all that. But it just, Pat, you saying that, Good it makes one, me man. wonder what makes someone like Don, uh, Mark Cuban hate Donald Trump so much. Okay, and by the way- and Are you about to tell us about unrealized revenge? Unrealized, exactly. Well, it oh, is, I'm yeah. gonna make you realize it. Pop your shirt off. Think about it, guys. Then. For Mark Cuban to stick up for someone's policies that has no track record, no history, she won't speak to the public. It, you you wanna ask yourself, like, and mind you, this is coming from a guy, PBD, that used to speak highly of Donald Trump. He liked Donald Trump, but now this Trump derangement syndrome, and I, I hate to keep saying it, but it's real. Something infects the brain, and I hope that there's like a, a practice of like a psychiatrist, that they start a new practice to fix people's brains, like Rosie O'Donnell and Mark Cuban. But you know, I, I thought about it. Did he sleep with Mark, like did Trump sleep with one of his girls? Did he outbid oh, him for a private? Man. No, no, or something. But then I realized, PBD, this is apparently Donald Trump was mean to him at a Mar-a-Lago party once. Oh, and no. Then, oh, and, and maybe this and Pat, you, you're a good body language reader. Look at how angry he is of what Donald Trump did him to this party. And you tell me if this is an enemy that he chose. That's not wise. Go ahead. You know, Donald Trump, for example, he's, uh, he's sort of our uh, billionaire. Yeah, well, you can have him. Um, this was years ago. Yeah, I mean, 2006. 20 years ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But look, look, he looks good here. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you my quick Donald Trump story. The you first, met the man? I've met him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the first time I met him, our company had just gone public, and we biggest IPO in history of the stock market, and I got invited to a Super Bowl party at his Mar-a-Lago Mar estate, beautiful place. And so we're down by the pool hanging out, and there's this terrace, whatever, all these people are eating. And here comes Donald, and, you know, that's back when I was single. I thought there would be all these hot women and... But anyways, there was Donald and um, he was married. <laughs> so, so he comes around and he's introducing himself to people and walks up and says, hi, I'm, I'm Donald Trump. Doesn't even listen for our names and anything. And he goes, you know what? 
someday you'll be able to sit up there with the rich people oh. and walks off. Oh, my. I'm like. <clears throat> and look, and that stuck with him and has been stinging and bothering him all this time. But look, mm. Donald Trump kind of bullied you. And look what's happened ever since. You became richer. You become more popular. But those are little moments. This is one of those little seeds that just infected his brain. And that I think, personally, this is stuck with him, Pat, forever that he was I, like, I actually don't have any problem with this. Me neither. And, and hear me out. Here's yeah. what you I mean by it. You just said you did. No, I don't no, have a problem but, with it. I'm saying he got him upset. But well, by the way, I, I actually think it did. But I have no problem with this. This is the part of Mark Cuban. I like, and let, let me explain. If you've ever read his book on competition, it's ridiculous. If you want to find out what he's really all about, read his ebook. By the way, he didn't even write a physical book. It's an ebook. It's eighty pages, made. Can you go to his book? How to? What does he say? The title is. Uh, uh, is this the one? Go go to his name to see if there's any other books. I want to see if that's the one or another one. Yeah, is this the one by? Diver uh, diversion publishing. Uh, uh, let me let me just. It could be that one, right? It's about. It's purely about him competing, dominating all this other stuff. I read the book. I'm like, what? I had everybody in my company read it. It says how to win, in sports and life and whatever, whatever. It's not a big book. It's a very small book, right? The audio. If you buy the Audible, you know how long the Audible of this book is. Uh -huh. Two hours and eight minutes. I can do that. <laughs> I can do that on my way home. <laughs> you got to read it because okay. you'll learn about how much of a psycho competitor he is. Yeah. So I have zero problem with that. However, here's the here's the thing. You ever met somebody who naturally is very good with women? Yes. Like, no. like, no. <laughs> like I'm talking about, but you know. Since they were seven years old, eight years old, ten years old, like listen, like Dylan, I'm telling Dylan's you, Dylan's gonna, Dylan's already some there. Some people are naturally, they just got it right. Yeah. You ever met people that naturally they're freaking impose fear in others, and they've been like that since day one. One hundred percent. Have you ever met people that naturally are professional shit talkers, and they've been since they were kids? Yes. You ever met people that are natural comedians, and they've been like that since kids? Me. Bingo. What's the point? Trump has something that he was born with, Mark, you don't have. <laughs> it, it, this is not a shot. It's not. You can't envy something you will never naturally have. There are things he has that he's not going to have. Th th this, is, this isn't the, you know, but unfortunately, Mark can't talk shit like Trump. Nope. Mark can't troll like Trump. Mark can't get on stage and speak and rally to people like Trump. Mark doesn't know how to, Mark, Mark doesn't have that part. It. He doesn't have it. He doesn't have that. In the NBA as an owner, he was it. He yes. was the guy. But he's just not Donald Trump. And that is very, very frustrating to a guy like him. You know, as, as much as he annoys the hell out of me with the policies and defending DEI and ESG and all this other stuff, I would love to see him run. You know why I'd love to see him run? Because I'd love to see what happens. He, he has the brass to be able to win. He is smart enough. He has the wealth. He has the following. He has the the left would freaking die for a guy like this to run. Some of the shit from his past is going to come up. But in a situation like this, he just comes across as envious of Trump. And it's the ugliest quality is when you're defending 100% that Kamala and them are not going to come up with a policy. Just because you said so, you believe them. Do you know how... What's the word? How uh, naive, naive and, and weak you look. You look weak that you're, you're kissing someone's ass. Not, all you had to say is, well, obviously, I don't know that. But the feeling I'm getting is the fact you just said, no, 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 no. They're not going to do that. You sound bot. You sound like they own you when you talk like that. Not attractive. It's just not attractive at all. Oh, they ask Elon Musk, hey, will you do anything with the Trump's administration? It says, he says, I am really busy. I'm doing a lot of stuff, but I'll think about it. What kind of an answer is that? It's leaving he, it up for, for, for question. But you would think if it was 100% ass kissing of Trump, he would have said, what, 100%, whatever he needs. I think this man, even Musk doesn't play that card. So I, I don't know. I, I just don't like his, you know, some of the ways he's been positioning himself. I love that interview with him and David Letterman. Yeah. Some of the stuff he's been doing the last few years. Come on, man. Real, real quick, do you know who, other than Donald Trump, Mark Cuban is feuding with at this point. I send it to Rob. Take a guess. Out of all people that he's feuding with. I mean, I, I looked on the timeline just on that tweet. It was a lot How of people. How about his co-host on Shark Tank, Kevin O'Leary? 
Oh, because man. Kevin O'Leary has come out and basically been like, I don't like this infringement on my taxes and on unrealized gains. Yeah. On he came out and, and defended Trump. Remember when they when they went after him for being sued in New York? Everything like that yeah. Kevin O'Leary has made very explicit comments, sort of defending Trump. Uh, or at least Trump's positions. Uh, so now you have two of the biggest names, the biggest names on Shark Tank, kind of jockeying for position and uh, feuding. So we'll see how that works out. Cuban. Uh, I think Kevin O'Leary has got something that Cuban doesn't have. I think so too. Kevin O'Leary, C- C- Cuban cannot uh, rap. And uh, uh, no, he, that, listen, Mike, Mark's a better businessman. Mark's a better salesperson. Mark's a better, a, a lot of things he's better. Mm-hmm. But Kevin's got a little bit of that Trump Jr.-esque. Kevin, Kevin's got that. At one point, I think he wanted to run for prime minister of Canada, if I'm not mistaken. Mr. Wonderful. I, yeah, listen, we get a lot of messages that, hey, how do you guys get your stories? Everything you've been doing. Eventually, I decided to invest a lot of money into it, hired 15 machine learning guys to make a new site available to you guys. We wanted to build it for us, but we're making it public to everybody. It's a freemium. Then there's two different paid aspects to it called vtnews.ai. I'm going to play a commercial for you. This is the first time you're seeing a commercial to understand what this is all about. This is an aggregated site where you need to only visit one new site that feeds everything in from others. No bias. We're not writing the articles. Other people are writing it. And you get to read the article and say, this is a left source. This is a right source. This is center. Rob, play this clip. Go for it. There are currently 8.2 billion people on Earth. 6.9 billion use their smartphones to read an astonishing 2 million news articles every day. Before you read another news article, it's important to understand how news outlets make money. Change. Conflict. Controversy. In other words, the angrier you get, the more money they make. So how do you get your peace of mind back? when every outlet has their own motive. The media leaving out the full context of what Trump was saying, instead pumping out these types of headlines. Left-leaning, right-leaning, who can you trust? Introducing vtnews.ai, an innovative news source that uses AI and machine learning to deliver a more human understanding of what's going on. There's more than one side to every story. Who's covering it? What are their agendas? Why is one side reporting a story when the other side is ignoring it? VT News shows them all. Access to 130,000 news sources. Most advanced AI in news. Ability to chat with VT AI. Bias meter showing the number of left, right and center sources. Lopsided stories are clearly identified. News timelines covering the lifespan of the story and predictions. Bring the pursuit of truth to your fingertips. Visit vtnews.ai, your only destination for news. Sick. We are so excited sick. about this. We are so excited about this that uh, finally this product is here that we can release to you. We shared this at uh, the Vault Conference. The reception was absolutely insane. For those of you guys that run podcasts or you're busy like me, you're somebody that's an executive businessman, you're running around, you got a lot of things going on, you don't have time for a lot of things. You just kind of want to see the motives and the bias on the stories. Go become a member. There's three tiers, the freemium. You got the second tier and a third tier that gives you unlimited amount of questions and customization for your own news, including local. Mess around with it. Go to vtnews.ai. We got a lot of big plans with this here because it's another one of those businesses that feeds into what we're doing Again, go to vtnews.ai, become a member, take advantage of the freemium or anything else that it offers for you. And uh, we're excited about other things that's coming in the future with this. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.